Hello, my name is Jerry Knox and I'm Professor of Agriculture Water Management based within the Water Science Institute at Cranfield University. This presentation is entitled Building Resilience to Climate Risks in UK Primary Food Production and is co-authored with my colleagues Professor Tim Hess and Professor Ian Holman. This presentation briefly outlines the context for UK agriculture and the agri-food sector and its importance to the national economy, considers some of the recent climate impacts and responses in the sector, and finally some of the future adaptation responses that are being considered in order to build greater climate resilience. Now many people consider that agriculture in the UK to be relatively small scale and a marginal contributor to the national economy. However, the agri-food industry is the UK's largest manufacturing sector with over 6,500 food and drink businesses sourcing produce from UK farms. The sector is a major contributor to the economy with a value of around 112 billion and employs around 3.5 million people, which represents about a fifth of total UK manufacturing turnover. Now, in terms of the sector, water is a fundamental component of both rain-fed and irrigated production and important for livestock, for drinking and dairy production as well. The irrigated sector itself is very diverse and critically dependent on water, primarily for quality assurance. Water demand is concentrated in the eastern parts of the country in the driest catchments, and most water stressed, and in, in, and in regions of the country with the highest number of environmentally sensitive habitats. The seasonal extremes in rainfall, notably excess and deficit, and the increasing risks linked to climate variability are major externalities facing agriculture, impacting both on the productivity and water availability for irrigation. This graph here was produced working with colleagues from Rothamsted Research and it shows how the simulated yield of wheat between 1912 and 2015 for a site at Cambridge uh, is impacted by climate variability. The graph shows the potential yields in black and the water limited yields in red. What is clear is the blue arrows identify the key historical droughts, notably in 1975-76, in 88-92, to 95-96, to 2003-4-2010, and most recently in 2018 and 2020. These highlight just how significant drought stress can Im impact on yield, even in a humid country such as England. However, it's not just summer droughts which are causing problems, but exceptionally dry springs, such as we experienced in 2020. And as a result, there are large predicted yield reductions expected this year of the order of 30 to 40%. Building resilience to drought and climate risks within agriculture cannot be considered solely at the farm level, but it also needs to consider spatial governance and supply chain scales and those many externalities that impact on the broader agricultural system. This so-called DPSIR framework highlights how climate-induced stresses such as extreme temperature and rainfall deficits can impact on production and how these then propagate through the agricultural system leading to both short-term coping responses and longer-term adaptation strategies. It's important to recognize that these adaptations are implemented across different institutional scales from farms to farmer groups, farm organizations, through to government agencies and policy makers, and also through the supply chain, including processes, retailers and consumers this reflects the complex interac interactions between these drivers, the pressures, the state impacts and responses within the UK food system. What is also apparent is, apparent is just how important climate variability can impact on the market with reduced food supplies, increased price volatility, reduced crop choice, product choice and a much greater reliance on food exports. Evidence from the recent 2018 drought has also provided us with some really valuable insights into how particular subsectors have been most impacted with both, from both positive and negative perspectives. In 2018, most reported impacts were negative, as we might expect, linked to poor crop growth and development, leading to reduced yields and also reduced feedstock availability for livestock. 
Rain-fed crops in 2018 suffered much more than irrigated crops, as supplemental irrigation helped to buffer extended periods of rainfall deficit and the high temperatures that we were experiencing. Without irrigation, many of the high-value horticultural crops, which are generally short season and shallow rooting, would have been catastrophically impacted by the drought and the climate extremes in 2018. As we experience more droughts linked to climate change, the UK agricultural industry is starting to invest much more significantly in irrigation to cope with rainfall uncertainty. And there are farmer concerns regarding the long-term viability of their rain-fed cropping. The data also shows that there were a few number of reported positive impacts, mainly linked to increased prices, reduced crop pest disease pressure, and improved soil conditions for farm operations. However, the reported impacts on farm income were all negative, and this indicates that any of the benefits that might have been accrued from increased prices were offset by the reduced yields and increased costs, leading to an overall negative impact on farmer well-being. This is a major issue looking forward in terms of the longer term impacts of climate change on both rain fed, irrigated and livestock systems. The change in climate will of course directly influence the underlying weather conditions that impact on crop growth and development, but also soil water conditions and river flows and aquifer levels. This figure shows how these translate into five main water related risks to food production. Now, a sustained period of rainfall deficit would impact on um, rain-fed cropping and the types of drought impact we saw on the wheat yields shown on the slides earlier. However, if prolonged, a scarcity of water resources could develop, and this would lead to a failure of small private water supplies and or restrictions on the right to extract water for irrigation from either surface or groundwater sources. Meanwhile, too much rainfall would result in excess soil water, reducing the workability and trafficability of soils, leading to problems for land management. Agricultural land can also be subject to inundation of water from the overspilling of rivers and streams during periods of high peak intense rainfall. Both the excess water and fluvial flood risk um, aspects of changing climate um, are cross-cutting risks across all of agriculture and are ubiquitous to both rain-fed, irrigated and livestock farming systems. In response to these various climate and water related risks, there are typically four main adaptation responses that the sector is uh, actively considering. The first is to either reduce the probability of the risk by decoupling production from the source of the risk. This could be, for example, by building flood defences on a, for agricultural land, but this is expensive and really only suited for high value cropping. However, one of the main problems of this adaptation response is that it also locks growers into a, a high value, high risk production system, and then gives them limited flexibility going forward to change their cropping business plans and cropping mixes. Like many other sectors outside of agriculture, um, many strategies have also focused on increasing robustness to absorb the climate shock. This aims to minimise the impacts of near-term high probability risks, whilst more uncertain longer-term threats are neglected. However, robustness is generally achieved by either building diversity, redundancy or headroom into the system, but these generally have high opportunity costs. There is also, over time, a tendency for agricultural businesses to expand and gradually absorb any of the existing spare headroom or redundancy that they had factored into their business for climate resilience, thus reducing their, their um, resilience to climate change and increasing their vulnerability. Finally, providing advanced warning of water-related risks can also help farmers to take preemptive action to minimise the financial impact through, although warning times for um, effect for quick onset events such as floods uh, work well, but for slow onset creeping phenomena such as droughts, 
um, trying to provide reliable advance warning is much more challenging in this sector. In order to support climate smart adaptation in agriculture, there will need to be a range of interventions that come in at both policy, governance and industry scales. And facilitating resilience is, will not just be the responsibility of either a single entity or business or an institution within, within agriculture, but rather it needs a much more concerted and coordinated approach across multiple scales and across multiple actors. If we think about some of the regulatory or policy drivers, then there will be opportunities to link the payment for ecosystem services in a post-Brexit world and the removal of cap to building resilience within agriculture. And much work is going on at the catchment scale in terms of developing catchment partnerships with the Environment Agency and ag agricultural abstractors to incorporate climate change adaptation into future water resources, regulation, planning and allocation. There will also be a need to really improve and generate much greater knowledge transfer into the agricultural sector to guide adaptation planning. Many farmers are very familiar with dealing with short-term climate variability and are well adapted to that. But understanding the longer-term climate risks and how they should be planning their businesses is a much greater challenge. And aligned with this, there will, need, they will, there will be a need to foster much greater multi-sector collaboration with other sectors such as environment, navigation, power generation and public water supply so that the cost for adaptation within agriculture are shared and benefited through a multi-sector approach. We're starting to see some of these initiatives come through in Water Resources East where multi-sector collaboration to build resilience to climate risks is being heavily promoted and well received by many sectors. Finally, there is a need for the subsectors within agriculture to develop their own strategies to cope with the future externalities and the risks linked to a changing climate and particularly climate extremes and variability. Here's an example of a strategy that's been developed for the irrigated horticulture and agricultural sector funded through some recent NERC research. And this provides the, the strategy, the visions and the, the themes and priorities where the agricultural sector needs to focus on in order to build resilience to future climate and water risks. And this report is freely, freely available for download with this link. Finally, there's a, a number of selected references, re references here for future reading. And I'd like to thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any further uh, questions or interest in this topic, then um, please, by all means, contact either myself or my colleagues, Tim or Ian at Cranfield. Many thanks.